Warning, sensitive images. I want to talk to you because yesterday I called the God of War and talked to him. I said, why are you doing all this? Don't you have any sympathy for the victims of the war anywhere? So he said to me, quote, the force of karma kills all sympathy and compassion. I said to him that I also understand his position and the work that he has to do, but I cannot bear it to see the humans suffer too much. So how about he punishes me instead alone and leaves other people in peace? So he told me it's not possible because the war karma and the peace karma come from different sources of energy. They cannot mix together. That's why the energy of war cannot cover, cannot wrap around, cannot mix with the energy of peace. You remember the story of the black magic woman that used this karma gap, bad magic to harm me even though she did not succeed in killing me. She did some harm. I even asked God if I'm allowed to tell you because uh, some suffering, some pain or some sorrow, I'm not always allowed to tell you or anyone, okay? I'm glad I could tell you this so that you can be more aware of the force of karma, of your own individual karma as well as the surrounding karma and the karma of the world. Please continue watching to find out more. On Monday, June 10th, 2024, our most caring Supreme Master Ching Hai Vegan graciously took time away from her meditation retreat for the upliftment of our planet to kindly inform us of her recent conversation with the King of War on the relationship between peace energy and killing energy in our world, including his answer on how we can remove the latter to have lasting peace. Among other topics, Master also related a story regarding her health to remind us of the immense force of world karma. Hello, beloved of heavens, the souls of eternity. I just have some little news to share with you and hope all of you are doing your best so that the result the outcome will be the way that you want it, especially in the spiritual domain. And by the way, before I forget again, thank you all who wished me happy birthday, you know, in the last weeks. I just couldn't reply to all of you personally, though I was thinking how to. Then I got too busy, neglected it. We dragon people are also forgetful and too over-engaging as well. And as you know me so well, I'm this kind of dragon. So forgive me, please. Yeah, you reminded me that uh, it is the year of the dragon, my birth year. So you especially wish me the best. Thank you. And thank you. Well, I wish all of you who were born in the lunar dragon year, also a fantastic time and all the best as well. I do not celebrate my birthday since long ago. I have no heart for it, as the world is still in pain and sorrow. But you all, vibrant dragons, please do celebrate and enjoy with heaven's blessing and love. I want to talk to you because yesterday I happened to observe some of the having hands of the King of Peace. And I thank him. I thank him a lot for helping to do God's will and uh, helping the world to have a more calm, more harmonious atmosphere. And then I asked him whether or not he could do more than just that. He said he can only do what he can and 
within the law of the universe. But actually I saw that he has already done more than what he could and what he does. Mostly he has to do it quietly and almost secretly. Then I called the God of War and talked to him. I said, why are you doing all this? So of course the answer is obvious. He told me that he doesn't enjoy what he's doing, like inflaming war in this world. But the karma force is too heavy, too overwhelming, that he couldn't do otherwise. So I told him, don't you have any sympathy for the victims of the war anywhere? Because as you see, it's not what anybody wanted. It's too much suffering, too much pain, separation, anxiety, worry, terrible terrible situations, physical, and all kinds of pain, you know, mental, psychological, emotional. So he said to me, quote, the force of karma kills all sympathy and compassion. So it's always zero, zero sympathy, zero mid-light, unquote. Yeah, yeah, mid-light means sympathy. Even though he wants to, he cannot. There is no room no chance for any sympathy to survive if the karma force is there. Oh, he, he talked more eloquently, but I <laughs> cannot seem to really say it. So I said to him that I also understand his position and the work that he has to do, but I cannot bear it to see the humans suffer too much, too much, especially the innocent bystanders, like the elderly and the children. That really is wrenching my heart every day. So how about he, he, he punishes me instead, alone, and leaves other people in peace and be willing to suffer, however much and however long it can be. And I try to do PR for myself, like... <laughs> Public relations, you call it. You know, I advertise for myself. I say I'm, I'm more worthy than any of the victims in the war. And all of them put together. So if you destroy me, if you punish me, it would be worthy enough. It would be good enough for everyone else. So he told me it's not possible. I say everything is possible. Why not? So he said, the killing and violent energy doesn't mix with peace energy. So the peace just stays alone and that killing energy stays alone. They won't mix together. And the killing energy will not be able to cover the peace energy. Thus, it is obviously like two polar kinds of energy, two different separate kinds of energy. So it's not possible for peace energy to mix with the violent energy in order to become one with it because the peace energy cannot be destroyed. I guess he means that my energy is for peace and the karma of the world is violent, killing and all this destruction. They cannot mix together so he cannot destroy it. So it has to destroy only the violent energy. I hope I make myself clear. When I was talking to him, it was all absolutely clear. Actually, his words, he said that because the war karma and the peace karma come from different sources of energy, they cannot mix together. That's why the energy of war cannot cover, cannot wrap around, cannot mix with the energy of peace. That's why I cannot sacrifice to make peace for people. The world's people have to change into a right way of life. I have to cut away the violent and killing way of life. Then peace will come and peace will reign and will be lasting. That's his words. This is the first time I heard something like that from the king of war. I thought you can give everything you want as long as you have it. But it's not true. If you have peace, energy, you can't even give it to dilute the war energy. 
maybe little thing like you can have by sitting next to a nervous person or a frightened person and calm him or her down with your energy, peace energy, but not to dilute the whole world war energy. Oh my God! And I thought we could give everything. And I'm very sad to hear all this. Later, I told the king of war, I will continue the best I can. I won't give up. And you better be on my side for your own sake. Goodness will always win. So you see, karma is something we cannot avoid. Good karma or bad karma. And another unavoidable is God's will. The other day, I talked to you about the one meal per day. I never intended to tell you. One time, the former vice president of Taiwan, Madame Lu, came to visit the Newland Ashram, and one of her accompanying females asked me if I eat once a day. I did not say anything. I talked about something else. I didn't want to talk about that. And that day, I don't know why, my tongue just slipped out and told you that. You know, even if I don't remember saying all this before about the one meal per day diet, it's just born out of sympathy for all others, you know, hungry people, hungry animal people also, and all the lack of comfort, of the minimal basic comfort of food for other beings as well, like even trees or plants. But then it slipped out of my mouth. After I sent it to the working team, I remembered that. But I've been busy with so many other things, so I noted it down. I say, delete that. Delete that one meal per day. And then I thought when it came back to me for proofreading, I would delete it. But then I did not. I forgot. And then it slipped out of my hands and went on air. Oh God, I did not want that to be on air. I did not even want to tell you to begin with because I didn't want the consequences of it. The multiplied karma of it. Also, I did not want for some people to copy it. They might want to copy what I do. It did happen that people wanted to copy what I do. But then it went on air. First of all, I didn't want to tell people about what I do in my private domain. And second, I didn't want people to follow it, you know, because it might be not what they should do or maybe not what I should tell them. Maybe I should not. Then I forgot two, three times. It slipped by until afterward. Oh, my God. When I talked to one of the team members, you know, I said, oh, my God. I wanted to cut that part about me eating one meal a day, but then I forgot, and now it's too late, it's too late. And I was feeling very bad for a few days. But later, heaven told me that it's supposed to be revealed. Ah, Even though I was sighing, you know, in relief, I still did not like for that part to be in the public like that. But then I know why it should be like that. So that there's another reason I could tell you not to be in the extreme and take care of your body, you know, take care of your health, etc. like that. Because God doesn't want people to restrict themselves too much with some kind of frenzied discipline, which is not all that necessary. So later, I also remember the Buddha allowed the monks and nuns to even have, uh, you know, nutritious juice of vegetables and fruit in the afternoon, after noontime, which is usually described as the only one meal a day time. Yeah. And then I remember so many yogis or practitioners practicing all kinds of punishment for the body. And I asked God if it's really helpful for them to be liberated. 
because after all, they did all that for you, no? So God say no. God doesn't want people to hurt his temple. The body is a temple of God, and we should revere it. We should take good care of it, reasonably. I mean, not go to the extreme, of course, unless sometimes necessary. Like, if you have to go on television, you know, like Supreme Master Television, for example, then you have to dress up accordingly and uh, do some makeup and all that. It's all my idea. I want the people in the world to understand each other, to get to know other nations or other regions' costumes, yes, and traditions. You know, the more they know, the better. So we do all kinds of shows to bring the citizens of the world together in some respectful, loving, understanding spirit that we should live together in that way. Then we would have peace, harmony, and we will never have war. But that is not enough, of course, because according to the king of war, I asked him, then what to do to destroy this warlike energy, killing energy, to have peace on earth, for people to live on happily, luckily, in the way they should? Then he told me, the karma force is extremely overwhelming, and the killing karma can never be destroyed unless the world people, his words, yeah, I quote him, quote, unless the world people change their way of life and completely cut off from violence, from killing, then war will be destroyed. Peace will come and permanently prevail, unquote. Now, we have been working for decades. I was feeling kind of lonely, working almost alone. But nowadays, with the uh, internet system, with the communication spreading out all over the planet, I feel that so many, many accompanying citizens of the world are really motivated toward peace and try their best to advocate that through the animal people free diet to the vegan regiment, the vegan way of life. Yes, and many other similar or related ways. And I'm very happy and glad. It's just that the number is not yet enough to cover the violent karma of killing. We kill, oh my God, billions and billions of animal people yearly. How can we make up for that? How can we ever make up for that? Unless we are changed to the benevolent way of life. Well, I guess even five-year-old kids will understand what I'm saying. But uh, the Maya magic is blinding everybody, deafening every ear, and doling all this conscientious spirit within the heart Oh, humans, mostly. Other animal people contribute less violent karma than us. You see, like, perhaps some animal people cannot be vegan, but humans, we have choice. We have lots and lots and lots of choices, and we can eat anything in the vegetable kingdom and have enough nutrition. That is the thing. We did not have to kill. We do not have to, and we will not have to kill. And we deliberately deny the benevolent way of life and choose to kill, to eat all this dripping blood, flesh, some even eating it raw. To eat animal people meat, when you remember it and think about it, you already feel very yucky not to talk about eating flesh that still has blood in it or even alive, oh my God. Oh, humans, some are so wicked. Oh, incredible, it's worse than some hell devils. Now would you try to think of how to formulate it again? I wish I could write it down. It would be easier for me to just read it, but I can't write anymore, you know, after editing a lot of 
shows on Supreme Master TV. I just don't feel like writing that much. I never really loved writing, only in school or oh, when I was younger, writing poems, expressing my feeling at that present moment because it just came out. I just had to write it down. But poems are easier for me because they are short and also they come out easily. So it was almost like I wrote down what came into my mind quickly and simply. But the karma stuff and all the things that I have to explain to you are different. It has to be exact and it has to be truthful. It's not just my personal feeling, but it has to be real and true. So it's more difficult than to writing poems or short essays in school. Yeah. So you see, like uh, <laughs> even in daily life, I don't write emails or anything. I don't have one anyway. I don't know how. Even if uh, I knew how, I don't know if I like to write emails. Only if I have to write comments, corrections or suggestions for the Supreme Master TV programs and contact some of my working team members. Otherwise, I just don't write anything except some short notes to remind me of things. And most important things, I mostly don't even know now. Like the conversation with the God of War, I forgot some of the words that he used. Well, it is all similar essence anyway. For example, the karma of uh, violence or the energy of violence is similar, you know. It denotes the same thing. And you will understand anyway what I try to convey to you. But otherwise, except for some idea or something I have to write and I didn't have time, or it was uh, not the time to write to my team members or I do not want to have any more radiation at the end of the day. I write it down by hand. Otherwise, I don't write to anybody, except when it's work for Supreme Master Television. And that's a lot of work for me already. Because if you wrote down some wrong letters, then you have to rewrite it again. And then you have to arrange it so that you write it at the same place or exact place. Uh, in such a small, uh, maybe, room of the script for the show. It costs a lot of time. I don't write with ten fingers, even. Yeah. With all that, I have enough work to do, and then I have to do inside work as well, you see? So I don't have the inspiration to write the long-winded <laughs> articles or something anymore. I write all these short sentences or short uh, articles, like for slogans of vegan or peace. Yes. Or short news, yeah, for the team. Some suggestions to the team, some shows to do, some comments on some shows, or some additions to some shows, etc. And these are enough work for me to do, because I need to do more inside work than outside, but I can't forsake either of them. I really miss the Himalaya times and the Hauta times. Hauta is a, a mountainous area in Taiwan where I used to go to do retreats, either alone or with a couple of uh, residents, yes. And then sometimes I took the whole residence group at that time to come with me and we pitched tents on the bank of the river. And we lived simple, you know, yeah, very simple. Just uh, cooked two, three big pots and we shared it, you know, with some wild kind of uh, edible vegetables at that time. And like maybe sweet potatoes, you know, potatoes, uh, some fruit that uh, we either ate raw or we put in a small bonfire, yeah to roast roasted apple, you know, roasted orange, roasted uh, corn, yeah, stuff like that. And we were very happy. 
at that time, you know, my uh, finances were limited. Our food supply and clothing, everything was limited then. But I was the happiest. Now I could have anything I want. I could have things sent to me if I want. But I don't enjoy that much anymore. And I eat very simple, you know. Even just brown rice is me, salt. And if some vegetables, then it should be those, uh, you know, no pain kind. And if fruit, then just melons, cucumber, that's it. No more of those uh, normal foods that humans usually consume. No oranges, no apples. I don't even buy juice because it would take a lot of work outside there yeah, to make juice. So I just eat melons directly if I have any. And even the skin of the melons I made into pickles. So I have vegetables as well, you see. If I want to, I can eat them for freshness, yeah? You just put water, salt, vinegar, and a little sugar, huh? And the peel, you cut into small pieces and put into a jar or a glass container, and you leave it in the fridge for three, four days, or for up to a week even, you can eat them. Fresh, you know, very nice, yeah. So we don't need to um, make a lot of uh, landfill garbage. And also, the peels are very nutritious, more nutritious than the flesh inside of the melons. Because when you eat melons, and you can make the peels into a vegetable pickle. <laughs> and that is quite a lot of food already. Yeah? If it's convenient, you know, then you can buy these melons and eat the flesh inside and use the peels to make pickles as your daily vegetable. It's a lot, you know. So I don't have to buy a lot of things. That is quite luxurious already. And life can be more contented that way. You don't have to do a lot of washing or cooking or produce a lot of garbage. Because nowadays people sell you things for delivery that's already packed, you know, in the uh, plastic bag, small or big. And that produces a lot of garbage in the end. Because I guess it's still a pandemic risk and many other risks of uh, illnesses, like even bird flu nowadays is spreading all over already and many other strange sicknesses or old sicknesses of revisiting. So people, when they deliver or wrap things, they sterilize the vegetables and then they wrap it in plastic to keep it hygienic for you. Yes. So in this kind of uh, situation, we produce too much garbage for the landfills and the environment and choke the waterways and contaminate the rivers. All kinds of water everywhere. Nowadays, a lot of water sources are contaminated with forever chemicals, microplastics, and all kinds of harmful things. The water is not as pure as before, as in the Buddha's time, you know. But even in the Buddha's time, the monks were already advised to use cloth to filter the water so that any worms or insects would not die in the cooking process. And even if the monks drink some milk at that time, the milk was humanely made, you know that. Some rich humans have cow, ox or sheep people, and they just milk them with their hands, very gentle, and just enough to use for their family or a little bit for the village. Not like how we produce en masse nowadays with all kinds of machines, hooked up to the poor cow people, a breast sucking all the milk out, and we snatch away their babies, even eat their babies. Oh my God, there's no end to our violence. I don't know how most people's hearts can bear to eat all this if they really know how the meat is made and from what. You see, they just see the packet. They cannot picture the cow people suffering, struggling, kicking, while being murdered or having their throat cut 
all the babies being separated from the mothers, crying all the way and going to be chopped, to be your view. Oh, and all the fish people jumping, grasping for breath in the net, or being caught alive, kept alive, and having the head chopped to be eaten while alive. Oh, my God, while well, still alive, you know, many other things like that. And the crap and the lots of people screaming when people throw them in the boiling water to be cooked alive. And all the stream people still jumping while being cooked. Oh, talking about that, it is terrible for the heart. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to, but... Uh, but... <laughs> I have to remind people that these are the facts. The truth is like that. The truth is the flesh, the meat that you stuff into your mouth comes from tremendous suffering and pain from the innocent beings who have done no harm to you. Talking about all this is is really heart-wrenching. Yesterday, I could not bear it, seeing so much suffering, physically and non-physically. You can see it in your mind, even if you don't watch TV. Because your soul is free, you know, you can roam around and look everywhere you want. Sometimes I have to shut it all down, otherwise I can't live. Yesterday I was in so much pain and suffering, seeing too much sorrow in the world. I, I normally don't pray to God for anything for myself. But yesterday I had to, I had to kneel down and say, please, please, just for my sake, please stop all this. Don't punish me with all this suffering that I have to see, have to feel. I have to know. It was terrible. I cannot bear it. But you see, we are the ones who create all this. We are the masters that could stop all this. So I just begging all of the people in the world, please be kind to yourself. Because if you really, truly want to be kind to yourself, then be kind to all others. Stop all the suffering for the animal people and for the humans in the war. And this is how you are kind to yourself. That's how you are planning a beautiful life for now and the future. And for all others around you, for all your children, grandchildren, great, great, great grandchildren, for further generations from your clan, your family. Please be kind to yourself. I'm sorry to I have told you all this. I just talk as it goes. You know, whatever comes. I don't write down anything. I don't have any people who write for me. I don't have anyone for a teleprompter or notes or anything at all. Okay. Yeah, finally, there's good news I want to tell you. You remember the story of the black magic woman, yes? that um, use, uh, you know, this uh, karma gap, bad magic to harm me. Yeah, even though she did not succeed in killing me, she did some harm. My intestine has been wounded. 
by this special witchcraft, and it has been injured for many months. After I told you about that, it's just like somebody shoots you, you know, with a gun or something, but it just passed you by, you know, it didn't go into your vital organs to kill you. It just maybe passed by, and it probably still can hurt you when it's near that organ. So similarly, my intestine was wounded, and I thought it would be uh, okay after a while, you know, because the wound doesn't cause much pain, no? It's differently done. So I just let it be. I thought, oh, after a while, it will be uh, okay, because the wound is not big. It's about maybe uh, one third of your your middle finger size, yeah? So it's not all that big. I thought I would have enough power to cure it. <clears throat> because I'm also busy, you know, I can't just sit there thinking of that little wound. So I kept doing all my other things. It's too busy, you know, outside work, inside work, business, meditation. And all kinds of things that happen, you know, every day of your life. Same with me, yeah? Even if I'm in retreat, things can still seep in if the world karma is too heavily laden at one time or another. It's always kept me busy. So I even forgot all about the wound, the injury, until some months later, maybe about four months ago, it began to trouble me. But I also forgot all about the karma gap, bad magic. I thought it's just world karma as a whole, you know? Because every time I asked something, they always told me it's a world karma. So I just took it for granted like that. I didn't even ask anymore. Because I'm also very busy, you know that, very busy. Every minute, every second of my life nowadays is quite busy like that. So I forgot also about the wound in my intestine, and it was becoming more and more troublesome, you know. It uh, caused trouble for the stomach. Only in recent days, then I was told, or well, thankfully, that the intestine has a wound, and the wound fits the stomach with discharge. That's why the stomach had a problem. But I didn't think much because it's just some pain and a lot of bubbling. But I didn't feel too too much uh, dragged out. I didn't feel like unhealthy or sick or anything. I was still doing all my work. Until recently that I was told like that. So then, then I knew what to do. I remembered that and it has become better now. Thank you to God's grace and all the protecting power. And I asked that source of information, why didn't you tell me earlier? Huh? Then I could have been more comfortable and the wound wouldn't have had to be there all this time. What if the wound had broken my intestines and then I, I would have had to go to the hospital? I can't do it now. I'm in retreat. So I was told, oh, it was a world karma that not allowed to. I say, ah, oh, again and again, all right. And I even know some home remedy to take care of stomach problem and injury, but I didn't even remember that. Until recently, when I was told that the I have a wound in there and the stomach has been fed with the discharge, you know, the intestines, injury fits into the stomach, what is called discharge. That is their exact word. Because I didn't think about that. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that the wound in the intestine could fit discharge into the stomach and make stomach problems. Uh, all kind of things happen, you know, difficult digestion, bloating, a heavy stomach that you could feel. Like somebody put some stones in your stomach and you have to walk around with it. And even when I knew all that, I did not ask for help. I was just too busy to think. And it's not because of busy things, but it's the karma that forces you to behave like that, that you don't understand. That you will forget, even though you can heal yourself, you forget. Even if you have a healing a medicine, you would forget. So karma is a terrible thing. That's what I want to tell you through this story. And I even asked God if I'm allowed to tell you. 
because uh, some suffering, some pain, or some sorrow, I'm not always allowed to tell you or anyone. Okay, I'm glad I could tell you this, so that you can be more aware of the force of karma, of your own individual karma as well as the surrounding karma and the karma of the world. Sometimes I take people with me, you know, like some attendant, and normally she he behaves very well until we stay somewhere together with some other disciples, even, and she becomes. Different, completely different. Like she doesn't cook for me, she doesn't do anything, just stay in the room all day long, you know, with the excuse of meditating. Fine. Finally, I have to stop my work and go cook for myself and for her to eat when she comes in. So every day like that, for at least almost two months. Till we moved away. Every day I cook. She does nothing. And she came in eight, you know, late, six, seven, eight. Then I had to remind her to be well, to be warm and all that stuff. I don't mind. It's just I thought that it was the world karma that made her do that way. But later, you know, heaven told me it's not. I said, then why does she behave like that? And they told me that, what's the word they say to me? I just want to quote exactly, but sometimes I forget. It was long ago. It's past already, you know, I don't remember. Okay, I forgot the exact word, but the meaning is that the person next to me in the next room who followed me, you know, and was supposed to help me, didn't do it because she was infected by the karma of the other two whose house I paid rent to stay in. So karma is a scary thing. And now you understand why many yogis, many spiritual practitioners went away to far away places, you know, Himalayan peaks or end of the Himalayan mountains where nobody ever can come up like Gamok in the Himalayas where it snow all year round. <laughs> and even in, in summer, the snow is so thick, nobody can go up until maybe when the army goes and clears. All the roads in the Himalayas, so the pilgrims can come. Then people come up and bring food for the yogis or the spiritual practitioners over there, in that remote mountain of the Himalayas. And they would receive food maybe during all that time and some dry food, you know, to keep for six months when all the snow is impenetrable in that Himalayan region. I went through much of that area after the, the army cleared the snow because it's a thick snow that on both sides is still like walls, very high walls, three, four meters high. Only snow and ice on both sides of the path where the pilgrims can go. So Kama is a truly a terrible thing. Sometimes you go out to work or do something or meet somebody and suddenly you feel different. You feel aggressive, you feel uncomfortable, you feel sick or you vomit, you get a headache. Anything like that is not always because of your karma, but because you are infected by the karma next to you. Or even some disciples, when they watch TV, outside the TV, then they get headaches all the time, anytime. If they don't watch the TV anymore, then they're free of headaches. So if you have some sickness that comes suddenly or something provokes it, you pay attention and avoid that situation, avoid watching that show or meeting those people if you can absolutely avoid it. Okay, by the way, just to tell you, there are so many things I can tell you or I cannot tell you. But I'm also very busy to talk to you every day. It's not the same situation now. In retreat, I have to do a lot of inside work, more important even than the Supreme Master TV work, but I have to do both. So if I don't talk to you for a long time, please understand, I never neglect you inside. I'm always with you. God permits me that grace. So please don't worry, okay? We're always together. God made us together. God is pleased that we are together. 
and that you cooperate with me under God's will so we can make our lives better, our relatives and friends' lives better, our loved ones better, and the whole world better in our little humble effort, okay? We thank God for allowing us to do that. So don't pray too much for anything. Just pray that God's will be done and that you will always be able to do God's work and that you never forget God. Pray God only that you will not forget God and always think of God, miss God, love God, long to be with God and pray that God never forgets you also. God doesn't. It's just that if we obstruct ourselves with some unrighteous deeds or some wrong concept or wrong thinking, then we block ourselves from God's presence and we will not feel God's presence and love. But God never stops loving us. God never forgets us. Just pray that you don't forget God. All right, my love? Okay, then, uh, I guess that's it for now. I have to go and do some other work. Also, Supreme Master Television work is still waiting. I will talk to you another time, yeah? All my love to you, all of you, disciples or non-disciples, and all beings on this planet and everywhere I can reach. My God bless me to continue to do that. My God bless you abundantly every nanosecond of your life and all your loved ones to be blessed that way and that all of you and your loved ones and all beings would never forget God. That's what I wish. Thank you very much. Amen. Dear God, we love you. We ask for forgiveness and for your guidance at all times so that we know what's the right thing to do for others. Well, of course, for ourselves also. Amen. Most beneficent Master, it is always such an honor to hear your precious words of advice and encouragement for our world. Your sweet voice makes all who hear it so very happy. Thank you for reminding us again that it is up to the world's people to create the beautiful and tranquil future we all wish to see soon by being kind to ourselves and others which includes embracing the peaceful vegan lifestyle. May precious master always enjoy radiant health and much serenity and the everlasting protection of the mighty goddess. To learn about the immense bank bureaucracy master has faced on numerous occasions when attempting to access her money for providing comfort to those in need and some of the challenges she encounters when traveling alone, please tune in on Wednesday, June 19th, 2024 on Between Master and Disciples for the full broadcast of this message. Also, for your reference, please check out the previous related Between Master and Disciples messages such as Eat According to Your Karma the three types of masters, the killing, terrifying world between karma gap, the ultimate master, the only son of God, the reason why souls come down to this world, etc. To view these and more related between master and disciples messages, all free for download, please visit suprememastertv.com and search for King of War.